I hereby sentence you to death. Objection. Isn't that a bit harsh? The DS was kind of the start of something, by which I mean online hope. I could never get connected at home, but when I did get connected, I'd play Mario Kart DS online all the time. I mean, it was probably better than the Switch's Wi-Fi is today. Not by much, but it was better. Nintendo DS download play was also a thing, and when you connected it up to the Nintendo channel, which was an app on the Wii, it would allow you to download upcoming DS games demos. If you didn't have a Wii, what would you do? You would go to your local game store and connect there, where they'd have DSs set up with a bunch of demos you could download, which, let's be honest, is kinda cool. There was also a web browser for the Nintendo DS that used two cartridges, both a DS cartridge and a GBA cartridge. And I know what you're thinking, you cannot use it on a GBA. But that's enough about the DS. The DSi is where Nintendo started to really get a roll on with online services. We had a lot of them. There's such an improvement from the DS to the DSi. First up is the Nintendo DSi Shop. Basically, the Wii like shop channel, but on the DSi, it featured a bunch of cut down versions of regular Nintendo DS games. But you know, I can't touch on Nintendo DSi services without the one, the only, Flipno Hatana. The creativity here was off the chart. This thing was an amazing animation like studio thing. Nintendo did like these videos where they teach you how to draw certain stuff in Flipnote Hatana, but you could make really cool stuff and some of the best animations I've seen ever were made here. It's a shame that Hatana is long closed down because there was some really awesome stuff on there. It was probably the best online service Nintendo ever made. There was never any connection problems with Flipnote Hatana. The community loved it, it was active, it was vibrant, and if Nintendo was to make Flipnote Switch and bring back the Flipnote Hatana, I cannot tell you how many people would flip the hell out. Come on Nintendo, do it, we know, we know you could do it, because you've, we could draw in Splatoon, it works, people make some awesome stuff, just do it. A few moments later. The DSi was really a testing ground for these deep, rich online experiences while still being on the go. And we have to thank it for a lot of the experiences that were on the 3DS and the Switch. The Nintendo 3DS is one of my favourite consoles. And it's got a lot of online features. You know, it's got that online multiplayer that like every console has these days. But the first big service I'm going to tell you about is the Nintendo Anime Channel. Now all you Americans, you didn't really have access to this. It was only in Europe and Australia and it came out around the launch of the 3DS and stayed active till the end of 2019. It gave you access to a bunch of stuff and nowadays everyone has Netflix and Disney Plus and all that. But back in the day, it wasn't so common. So having this basically modern streaming service for free that had access to a bunch of anime from the Pokemon anime, to the Kirby anime, as well as Azuma 11, Yokai Watch, even like some westernization. There was Wings Club for some godforsaken reason. Okay, so the 3DS eShop really was the start of Nintendo's modern storefronts. It basically took what the news channel and the eShop channel on the Switches were and smashed them together into one cool thing. But it also really went into the news portion. It was where I first watched a bunch of the Switch trailers before I switched over to watching the Nintendo Directs on a proper PC setup. It, it's really cool and you could download a lot of the trailers and view them in 3D, especially for the 3DS ones. Sadly, they've kind of killed that off now, but um, yeah, it was really cool. It was basically a modern store system. There's a lot of demos, a lot of free games, and it was the launching place for a lot of the 3DS services, such as the Nintendo Badge Arcade. The Nintendo Badge Arcade was really cool because it allowed you to basically grab these little like Nintendo characters, whether they be in pixel art form, 
straight asset rips or completely original things. And they didn't just look good, some of them could open like your settings and your playbook. It allowed you to really customise your 3DS and well the idea was that you paid to have more goes on each claw machine. On the whole you had to pay to get more like access to the claw machines, more goes. But you could get one free go from the claw machine and if you did like a bunch and got really lucky on the practice claw machine you would get a bunch more plays and you could get a bunch of stuff completely for free. Nowadays it's shut down, you can't buy goes, but there's two free goes every time you log on till the eShop closes down, I'm pretty sure, which is gonna be awesome. So if you haven't really spent a bunch of time customizing your 3DS like I have, um, now is a pretty good time to just like quickly grab some stuff. You have probably a few weeks, few months, but um, yeah. It was really cool. Well, if you like this video, consider giving it a like, subscribe, comment, say hi. You know, and if you feel like saying hi, drop it to the Discord server, there's a link down below. First link, you know, pretty good. Um, yeah, we're working on the full review for the Switch OLED, like long-term testing, that's gonna be really awesome. Yeah, share this video with a friend that you think would enjoy it, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.